it's interesting that you mentioned that some of the medications also help with um, kind of ADD, ADHD type symptoms, which makes sense because we're talking about that stimulus seeking behavior, especially with stress eating and things like that, which, you know, made me kind of think about um, this topic of perimenopause and menopause and how it can change um, how people's brains work, but also how their bodies work. So how do you see the, the you know, topic of perimenopause and menopause impacting the efficacy of some of these you know, treatment regimens? Yeah. So I, in my practice, I have seen better outcomes for women who are in perimenopause or menopause on the injectables um, than the pill medications. I think because we know now more and more about these injectables that this is an overarching kind of overused term, but it's actually relevant here. They help balance hormones. So there's also data that suggests even outside of weight loss that semaglutide, terzepatide, they help in various um, reproductive issues. So they help PCOS, they help um, um, endometriosis, they help with infertility because they help with rebalancing hormones and reducing inflammation in the reproductive tract. So not only is it helping weight loss, but it's also helping to rebalance um, some of the hormones that are more erratic um, in the perimenopausal state. So we're seeing kind of separate um, benefits from the injectables, which we don't see with the pills on perimenopause and hormonal imbalance also helps the thyroid. It really helps in general because a lot of our processes where there's an imbalance are inflammation driven. Talk, going back to how we talked about actual fat mass producing inflammation. So not only does it help with reducing the inflammatory effects throughout various organ systems, you see the weight loss, but you also see improvement in kidney function, in heart function, in thyroid function, in perimenopausal symptoms, and all those things that are due to inflammation and the imbalance of hormones thereof. How do you see um, the impact of medications for things like ADHD, for instance, I'm going to say like a Vyvanse, Adderall, because um, getting on and off of those things do impact weight as well. Um, and, and hormones and things like that have a, a huge impact on how those medications impact, affect people um, and whether people feel like they need to take more or less of that. How do you kind of take into account other medications such as those that patients might be on or, you know, changing the frequency of when it comes to um, helping them manage their weight? Yeah, so actually, so Vyvanse, it's interesting. So a lot of the psychotropic medications, so medications that work on your brain and your mood, some of them cause weight gain. So things that are like first generation antipsychotics. So things like Abilify, Risperidol, they potentiate like worsen metabolic syndrome immensely. And then you have things like Vyvanse and Adderall, which some people tend to like because it gives that stimulant effect like the fentramine and helps with suppressing your appetite. And Vyvanse is also FDA approved for binge eating disorder. So, but what I have found in my patients for both, they end up needing less of this medication. So again, I think when they're on the like semaglutide, terzepatide, it helps your cognitive functioning in general. So I've had a lot of patients where they're able to lower their dose of Vyvanse, they, they use their Adderall much less frequently um, because of they just get improved uh, concentration, focus, cognitive abilities on these injectables as well.